Uh, this is a great introduction for our presentation, I think, because what I'd like to do, is, what we're going to do today at this point, is talk about um, DSS's efforts to take VISTA and move it from the VA, customize it so it, it works in a non-VA setting, and move it along and bring it into the open source community. Um, so I'm Hugh Creedon. I'm the operations manager at uh, DSS for the DX Vista side. With me is Deanne Clark, who's product manager of DX Vista, and also JD Keith, who is our architect, our network architect for the DX Vista side. So we're going to talk a little bit about this journey from uh, the VA's Vista, how we customize it, and make it. Um, into what we call VX Vista, and then we eventually move it to the open source community, and hopefully elicit much support from the open health or the open community, open source community, along with the open health tools community, because we're members of that too. I don't want to read everything to you, but uh, let's see. Okay. Here's some of the differences between VA's VISTA, the FOIA VISTA, as we take it out, and VX VISTA. You can see that uh, we're adding on layers, doing things like removing social security numbers as the medical record number, adding pediatric kinds of uh, components in there, beefing up the uh, women's uh, treatments, things like that. And uh, as I say, I, I, I don't intend to read all of this because we had a lot to stuff to cover. And here, this was our, our challenge. How to bring this out, uh, modify it, and make it so that it can be used across a wide range. And right now, DSS has uh, implementations in a single doctor's office. Actually, it's, he's added a nurse practitioner uh, to the office, uh, and clinics and hospitals. Um, state, county, private. So we've had this experience over the last five years of developing it, and in the back of our minds was how to make it open source, because it, it hadn't been open source at first. We, we kind of didn't want to just turn it loose until we felt we had a handle on it. So it wasn't really until the end of last year that we put it out to the open source community with uh, an Eclipse public license. And that's another whole story and probably a whole presentation itself as to what kind of licenses are attached to this. But uh, it, we felt that that was the best business model for us to adapt. And also what we feel is that allows a collaboration among various um, the, the users, the developers, researchers, anybody who wants to come in and modify and change and add and subtract to our code, they can do that and uh, they don't have to give it back to us if they don't want to. They can if they do and we'll move that along. So, And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Deanne and she's going to talk about the kinds of tools that we've selected to try to move this forward as an open source uh, collaborative, cooperative adventure. Thanks, Hugh. So the last two bullets on that slide previous are the ones that we're going to focus on today, but the first two are, as Hugh said, a long story. Please see us later if you want to hear the version of how we decided to distribute it and how we decided to uh, actually release it. Um, the second two bullets were what kind of tools can we create to build a community that can grow it way beyond what DSS as one individual company, small company at that, about 250 people could do. And we started to analyze what's out there. How could we build a community? Um, yesterday, I sat in on a presentation where the, the gentleman speaking was an educator. He was talking about fixing education with open source. And he said that the open source plan out there typically is um, release early, release often, and fail rapidly. Well, DSS didn't quite do it that way. We didn't release early to open source. We played it more conservatively. As Hugh said, we wanted to have some successful implementations. We started with outpatient ambulatory care. Then we went to an inpatient psych hospital, uh, geriatric psych, small 60-bed hospital. Then we went to state mental health. 
uh, to large hospitals in the state of Idaho, and we've been ramping up in terms of what we think is capable, you know, capabilities of the system and what other modifications needed to be made before it was open to the world. We never wanted to see a failure of VISTA. There's several of us doing the VISTA uh, project to the world, but anytime any one of us fails, it reflects on VISTA as a whole, and we don't need that. We need the support and unification of everybody who's making VISTA work to make it work. So we actually had a, a, a website when we started this project four years ago called uh, thevistaexperts.com, and it failed. So I guess in terms of that fail rapidly, we did follow up with that one. Um, that was an unsuccessful venture because we didn't know how to make a community then. We didn't have access to tools. We didn't have expertise inside our organization to create what is now vxvista.org today. So learning a lot, I think, is the next step after you fail rapidly. And we learned a lot from that, and we started to go out and research what tools were available uh, about two years ago to actually build a community that was sustainable, that would allow us to grow it over time. Uh, we ended up choosing something called the Atlassian Product Suite uh, for a lot of reasons. You can see those on the slide. We have a, a strong belief in having support available. Something that's open source and unsupported is too risky for healthcare in our world. So we've been trying to make sure that we use open source when possible, but sometimes the best things out there aren't yet open source. Atlassian was a wonderful um, blended mix because many of their plugins are open source, and some of the things that aren't open source, they were extremely generous. They donated thousands of dollars worth of licenses to the project because VX Vista itself is open source. So they, they're very cooperative, and that kind of partnership between um, public and open source entities is a way to succeed with open source. You need to take help when you need it, you need to know when you need help, and you need to find out how to get it. And people are very open to the idea of making the world a better place, we've found. So we're, we're very grateful for that. Um, that type of collaboration, I think, is going to make vxvista.org successful where the vistaexperts.com was not successful. This time around, um, as JD is going to explain, we've had many, many successes along the way in just a few short months since January when we did release the system as open source. Um, all credit and credit is due to the folks from Atlassian and all the other companies that collaborated to build the vxvista.org site. Some of the open source plugins uh, are listed on this slide that we've used within the vxvista.org site. Again, I won't read them all to you. The, the presentation is published up on the uh, OSCON website if you, if you want to learn more about those plugins. Some of them are written by individuals, and some of them are written by Atlassian themselves. Some of them are written by Customware, which is a group that supports and trains and implements some of the Atlassian software. So it, it's quite a combination between commercial companies, individuals, and users of these product suites who donate back in or who build plugins that are either um, commercial or open source. This uh, slide gives you an idea of additional open source plugins that we're not utilizing yet at this time that we can tap into going forward. So if you're starting out with a project uh, and building a community page, then you too can tap into some of these things. We had multiple target audiences with the vxvista.org site. We knew that there would be people who are non-technical. There would be people who are technical. There would be people who are looking for an EHR system. There would be people who are looking for research information. So this slide gives you a pretty good idea of the types of activities we built the site uh, framework for and the tools that help them. Some of them are open source, some of them are not. Um, but the ones that are open source, we hope to broaden and widen over time in support of an open source endeavor. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to JD to talk to you a little bit about the structure of the site and give you an idea of what it looks like. Thanks, Hugh. Thanks, Deanne. Um, so in becoming a community, DSS absorbed the community tools. The tools that we had selected that would become usable by the community were the tools that we used to design the community base architecture, the structure underneath. Um, FreeMind for mind mapping was key in developing that structure in the beginning and leading us toward a usable set of tools for the community members today. So I'm moving along Balsamic, which is a mock-up tool, allowing us to design pages just out of the free mind effort and take those ideas and put them into a usable form and direct users back to individual pieces that need to be prominently displayed and encourage the community to both participate and contribute back using the same tools that were used to develop. Um, this is a mock-up 
actually a mockup of the CPRS application. So it's also used to develop new modules and to redevelop older modules, things that have come out of the VA and continue to be useful and used today and hopefully used for a very long time. Um, some of the other tools, Gliffy, for instance, very usable for workflow mapping and mapping application development processes. Um, others include uh, the Adaptivist Bubbles application, which is a plugin for the Atlassian Confluence tool, and that allows us to manage forms on the website, and today is doing a really good job. It's one of the out most outstanding of the open source tools. Um, JIRA is another one that Deanne mentioned on one of the earlier slides, and that one is used for um, technical support, bug reporting, bug tracking, and bug fixes, getting back into the system. So coming full circle and getting some of those problems that still exist both within the community and within the software fixed, things that may not yet be de-veteranized or things that just appear um, due to circumstances in the field that no one has actually seen in Vista to date. Despite what Phil said, it does still happen. <laughs> Vista still has bugs even in VA, and that's still an active development process, so we support that endeavor as well. Um, Never trust anyone who says there's no bugs. <laughs> <laughs> so today, visitors are coming to the website from over 80 countries around the world, and that's six months into the project. So it, it is definitely growing and moving forward. Um, we see that content is continuing to grow. Since inception, six months ago, the content has doubled and continues to double with over 250 active contributors to date through blogs and documentation, <coughs> webinars contributed by uh, experts in each of the modules and the fields that we're discussing on the website. So a few statistics. Not going to go into all the details, but you see that a lot of the actual traffic is coming from direct access, and that's being led from materials that are marketed today, uh, most likely through DSS and the Open Health Tools effort, and just people typing the www address to get to vxvista.org. Um, Google is also a great referential site drawing in a lot of visitors who are searching for electronic health records and Vista popping up as one of the leading electronic health records in the world. So, and I think Deanne is going to talk a little bit more about the community projects. One of the great aspects of the Atlassian tools that we used is that we really can continue to grow, develop, and change the look and feel over time. And then we can extend that out to the community. So we have multiple community projects. Some of them are support uh, projects that are they're using DSS as their full support for implementing the VX Vista system. Others are people who found VX Vista because of their, their need for a solution, because of their desire to find the best system, because of their desire to use open source. And they're a complete do-it-yourself, do uh, free open source module um, implementation. We can still extend to them, and they can make use of, during their implementation, the tools that this website provides to them so they can collaborate, innovate, they can choose to share with other projects in the community, or they can keep things as a virtual intranet where they're working on something in collaboration with other staff members at their organization, then they can choose to publish it later, or they can keep it purely internal as a building tool and as a collaboration tool for a project. Um, that's worked out very well. We have multiple groups doing that. We have uh, a group from Arizona State who found VX Vista and is implementing it strictly on their own. Um, because of their budgetary crisis, they're asking us for some help in writing some custom interfaces, but otherwise they're, they're a DIY, do-it-yourself shop. We also have the um, curriculum development project that's being sponsored by the Office of the National Coordinator, HIT, uh, doing some experimenting with the site to see if it will help in furtherance of their curriculum. And we have a few other projects that are that are out there that keep their spaces a little bit more private but are actively using the site to facilitate their implementation so it's a it's a very interesting blended model of public and private shared and what the definition of sharing is is it the entire world or is it sharing it with the people who are doing what I'm doing so it it's an interesting model 
The VxVista enhancement process is also supported uh, through the website, and you can see a diagram showing that the site facilitates projects being proposed, new development, new modules, fixes, and so forth. Some of them become accepted, and someone from the community or from DSS or Open Health Tools can take it on and start to write this new, new piece. Once it's been cleared by the governance body, it can be added into the open source stack or it can be something that is marked as VX certified, meaning it will do no harm if you're running a VX Vista system and you install this, just checking to make sure that um, nothing overwrites anything that, that shouldn't be overwritten and so forth. Governance is important, but because of that licensing model with the EPL license, it can be open source or it can be a proprietary business that someone spins off after they do their work. And, and again, we hope that those things get donated back to the open source stack for the betterment of everyone. Sometimes they will and sometimes they won't. <laughs> I'd hope that would be a link, but it's not. We wanted to show you an example of um, collaboration on the site that we worked up for this presentation today. Give us just a second. Do what, sorry? Thank you. <laughs> Maybe. It's a good thing we have a support community for it. <laughs> <laughs> it won't, it won't click. No? Maybe. So this is a diagram that we used um, Gliffy for, and we wanted to, to highlight some things, especially since Fred's in the audience, um, about what we think of as collaboration over time. And collaboration in Utopia today means a blend. It means a blend between what's open source and what's proprietary. It just does. Some of the things that are out there that will make medicine and make all of our healthcare better are not yet available as an open source tool. So with VX Vista, if you start with a foundation as an open source system, and then you take add-ons from there, then you have an opportunity to grow. And you start with a foundation of open source, your cost of buy-in is reduced to almost nothing or nothing, depending on your implementation model and style. And then you can make use of a pick and choose a la carte world of the things that are out there that people have been working on that are good and maybe not evil, um, but that really will help with outcomes, that really will help with medical decision support and that really will help as hospital CIOs make decisions about what to bring in. Over time, with any luck and everybody's work, this side will have as many or more options as the right-hand side of that document. But we are in a world of today and we've got a lot of problems to solve. So having a blended model and having a model that allows that collaboration between public and proprietary organizations is one that we think will be the most successful. And it's not just open source people who need to collaborate. It is some of these proprietary systems. They're starting to do that through interoperability. They're starting to do that with some of the mandates out there. Some of it's in place, most of it isn't. And it's all our problem to solve through open source and through proprietary. It's my soapbox for the day, but I wanted to add that one in. Turn it back to Hugh um, for this section. Next slide, Jimmy. Did not.
Well, we're hoping that the uh, collaboration that we're offering is going to help move along the way healthcare is delivered to, uh, throughout the United States and eventually uh, worldwide. Is it, uh, and we hope that it's going to result in better patient care, and that's the bottom line. And there's a number of ways that that can happen. So, oops, let me, these are some of the, uh, the tools that are available on the website. And uh, I, I don't think we have time. May I go back? Okay. Here, we're, this is going to be uh, our next generation of the development in the website and the things that will be added, Confluence, you see over there the various tools that are uh, being added in the various quarters so that we become more and more robust uh, as a collaborative site. I might mention, by the way, that on the vxvista.org site, if, if anybody wants a copy of VX Vista, all they have to do is click on it and it'll, they can be, they'll be brought to the download site. Uh, so it, it's available to anybody who wants that. Um, somebody had asked, how do you get some Vista, I think. So these are some of those tools that were listed and I'll just uh, kind of flip through them. GUI mockups, uh, balsamic and Gliffy task, JD mentioned them. So this is the whole um, array of them that's going to be the second generation, our, our next iteration on the, uh, the website. And uh, they can visit it at any time and, and check those out. It's going to, oh, the other thing, uh, we have a series of webinars that we produce on a weekly basis. And if anybody would like to participate by having giving a, a webinar where we are open to, to that on a community participation basis. The other thing too is if you have some service that you want to advertise on there, say you do installations or you provide support or something, you're welcome to, to you know, let everybody in the community know that too on that site. So um, these are some of the links. Um, <laughs> yes, they were. And that button there is you'll find that, the download VX Vista, that will be on the site uh, for anybody who wants to do that. So and I think uh, I think that's it. Yes, quick exit. Okay. Any questions? I see uh, yes, Bashkar. Well, it's not a question, it's more a comment at the end, which is on one of your slides. You use the words open source or, propri or open source or um, commercial as opposites, and those of us in the you know in the in the commercial business or trying to make a business model based on open source think that there's not a dichotomy between the two. The two of them go very well together. Yeah, that's actually a good point, that's part. And I keep trying to not use the word proprietary over and over again, so I was trying to come up with a synonym, but you're right in strict definition. You can have open source supported by a commercial entity. That is our model at DSS that we, we use for the COS model versus the FOSS model of software. But good good clarification. I'll make a change if we use that again. You, you might say something like closed but useful, which I think is a, a good summary of your of, of your of your point, right? I mean, there's some really useful stuff that, that we in the open source community do not have that by using your uh, your version of Vista you get, and it's closed but useful. So uh, that might be another way to say it. So, uh, yes. look, looking from the uh, small clinic uh, single provider viewpoint, modules that I see missing on either side of that line are configuration, maintenance, training for staff, training for doctors as to how to use the darn thing correctly, cost control, and at the tail end of that, I call damage mitigation. Oops, we made a mistake with it now. How do we fix? Yeah, that's actually, that, that's not quantified because it would go on either side. The vxvista.org community site has several hundred, uh, several, well, maybe, I don't know, several hundred posts and links to a, a vast documentation library of over 20,000 pages of documentation for somebody who wants to do it themselves or who doesn't have the budget, no, I, I, um, I, I but you can purchase the support. No, I'm saying Yeah. You'll find specifically that training is covered under a lot of the webinars and a lot of the tutorials that are available on vxvista.org today. 
Um, and those are continuing to grow as community efforts. So they're not modules per se, but it's informational. And there's wikis on there. I understood that they're not integrated into the operation of the system to enter the wrong data. You know, maybe the system kicks off this operator should have a training, training module built in. Not right now, they're busy, but schedule something 15 minutes at the end of the day or learn how to do this right. Sounds like an opportunity for a community member to create a new integration and a new module that sits on top of the Exvista. <laughs> It, it might not be something that's on our priority list right now, but if anybody else thinks they can do that, sure. Uh, just a question about um, the, one of the challenges with Vista in general is it's, it was built around a, a single payer model versus almost all proprietary um, health information systems started out as an accounting package and sort of just moved into the healthcare world. So what? What pieces have been added to that to make it so that you can bill 1,500 insurance companies? Sure, it's probably a myth, and there's many myths out there about Vista that it's built on a single payer, single payer model. Um, VA has been billing um, secondary insurance or, or private insurance since about 1998, um, so they've had a model within their system. The commercial side of, of, of DSS and VX Vista, we don't utilize the integrated billing package that's part of FOIA Vista. It's there and it's dormant. It can be used if someone wants to try to use it uh, because it doesn't have the ability to go ahead and bill Medicare and Medicaid. So it'll handle the private insurers much better than it will Medicare and Medicaid. But we have uh, a, an integration and, and now it's part of our DSS family of companies called PAMS, the Patient Account Management System. It was originally created by Informatics Laboratories out of Salt Lake City. That's our recommended solution if you want to have a single vendor doing some of the different add-on pieces. Otherwise, you can write in, in integration uh, for billing information to a, any other practice management system, or you can have someone create it for you. The data that's collected and the point of care data that's collected is not conditional upon whether the patient's covered by insurance or not. There are indicators within the system if you set it up correctly showing what insurance the patient has, um, if you're getting that data coming in or if you're using the package directly to enter it. And then in terms of generating the bills, that data from the encounter capture goes across an interface or into the PAM system, which is also written in VISTA, written in the MUMPS layer. Let me just add a little bit. That's one of the modifications that we made to VISTA to, to add so that the data is easily extractable. Uh, in the VISTA model, it goes to a PDF file, a patient treatment file, and we, so we alter the encounter so that it, it's much more easily extractable. One of the things, when Deanne was saying, you know, do no harm, one of the things that we keep an eye on is what's going to happen when future patches come down the line, and we try our best to anticipate that because what we're trying to do is stay in sync with the VA's development because they're spending millions and millions of dollars in their continuing development on this, and uh, we want to be able to continue to make use of that development. So, I think that's it, and I think it's lunchtime. So, thank you all very much.